In the fall of 1996, I encountered a movie that would change my life forever. It wasn't supposed to, but it did. You see, I got to watch as a drummer from Erie, Pennsylvania. He joined a band that he wasn't supposed to be a part of, and he helped them reach new heights of fame and glory that they really weren't ready for. Being that it was set in 1964, this means they found themselves on the stage of the Hollywood television showcase about to perform their hit single, That Thing You Do, in front of a live studio audience and live on the air. The defining moment for me was when Lenny, the guitarist, turns to Guy, the drummer, and he says, Hey, Skitch, how did we get here? How did we get here? Guy utters a line in response, and the movie continued on without me because my world froze because in that moment I realized that I was in the same boat as these guys. No, I wasn't on TV. I didn't have a hit single, but they had just watched this life that they found themselves living build itself up around them while they did the thing that they loved. They were just along for the ride. And in the same way, I realized that I was watching like a spectator as my life lived itself without even asking my opinion. This question of how do we get where we get in life and why do we get there and how much control do we have over where we end up when all is said and done, this question is asked a lot, but it's answered very seldomly. I discovered my answer when in a moment very much like Lenny, I found myself in a position I had no idea how I got in. It was my very first speaking gig. I had never done it before. I was not a public speaker, but I had a full room and two hours to fill. <laughs> and I had to ask myself, how did I get here? <laughs> so I looked at all the things that brought that together and all the things that caused those and all the things that caused those, and I traced cause and effect like a genealogy back to one defining moment that started it all, where I made a simple decision. It didn't mean anything, but it meant the world and it made all the difference in the course of my life. And that decision was simply to put on a tie. You see, until that day, I was the guy who was wearing a graphic tee, I had a leather wrist cuff, seashell necklace, long shaggy hair, ripped jeans, flip-flops year-round. You know the guy. I was social cilantro. You either loved me or hated me or you hadn't met me yet. <laughs> That's how it worked. So when I found myself in the closet figuring out what to wear to go hang out with some friends who were in from out of town, I saw it, a little purple tie that my dad had given me just because he hated the color purple. <laughs> and I decided I'd never worn that tie. Right now I will. No reason. What's the worst that could happen? And some things you don't learn until you have to learn them. Like you can't really wear a tie without a collared shirt. Collared shirts don't really go well with ripped jeans, but once you change into slacks, the flip-flops have got to go. So I watched as the decision to tie a strip of fabric around my neck led to my wardrobe changing itself from head to toe, again, without really asking my opinion. <laughs> the difference was that this time, I was the one that put in the key and turned the ignition. It was my decision that started that chain reaction. And what a reaction it got. I went out to where my wife was and I said, how do I look? I struck a pose. And what normally would have been, are you going to wear that? All I got was a look. A look I hadn't seen since our honeymoon. Because in front of her, she didn't see, no longer did she see a little kid who was lost and floundering through life, working part-time, answering phone calls at a company he didn't care about, working for a boss he hated. She saw a man who took charge and made a decision. A small decision, but you got to start somewhere. And the reception was just as positive from my peers. And that's when I learned my first real life lesson about how we live in a feedback loop. Let me explain to you how that worked. We live in a day and a culture where if you see me wearing a tie, that communicates to you that you should respect me. And so you do, to a degree, because that's what we're trained to do. And while a tie is a very superficial appendage onto the shell of humanity that we live in, the respect was real. And real respect coming in translates as real confidence going out. And slowly but surely, this confidence in me grew. I'd never felt that before. And it switched places with the tie. To the point where people weren't responding to the clothes anymore. They were responding to the person inside the clothes. The tie was just the impetus that started this feedback loop. The more people respected me, the more confidence I had, the more confidence I exuded, the more respect that demanded. See, I became a new person. 
Now, how in the world does putting on a tie turn you into a new person? That sounds a little backwards. Did you know that smiling can actually make you happier? We often think that a smile is the end result. It is a result of happiness inside. It's an outward expression of something that exists within. But there's a growing body of compelling research that shows that the opposite is also true. It's been shown that if you put a pen in your mouth to force your face into the shape of a smile, certain neurotransmitters go off in your brain that say, hey, hey, wait a second, we're smiling. There must be a reason to be happy. And that belief turns into reality. And we found that regimented sessions of smiling and laughter have helped come, help people come out of depression. In the same way, we think of our lives as an expression of our inner selves. If you want to change your life, you have to change yourself. But sometimes, sometimes a change in your life is what leads to the change in yourself. It's like the chicken and egg situation. No one cares which one came first. The fact is that they're both here, and they lead one to another until the end of time, or the end of chickens. <laughs> and you see, this effect has a snowball effect as well. What snowball effect? I'm glad you asked. Let me give you an example. When confidence enters your life for the first time, it does not knock, it does not ring the doorbell, it doesn't wait for you to answer the door. It barges in like a bull in a china shop, and it brings its friends adventurousness and recklessness. And those little things whispered in my ear and said, hey, the last change you made went over really well. Let's make a bigger one. I'm not really making a big difference in the world, getting paid to get yelled at for a living. <laughs> so I applied at a marketing agency. And I got the job because of this. How do I know? Because after I left that company, I asked the guy who interviewed me, and I said, I know who I was up against. They were all more qualified. Why'd you go with me? And he said, the second I saw the way you tied your tie, I knew you would fit in with our family culture. <laughs> See, when you're a guy who pushes envelopes and the envelope is a tie, you pretty much just land on tying pretty cool knots. And I was wearing a neat knot that day. And I did fit in with that culture. I fit in a little bit too well. I got a little bit too comfortable. It was odd at first. There are places, it's a place where words like creative and mobile and local and digital are all nouns. And I'm married to an English teacher and that doesn't really work for me. <laughs> and so the adventurousness and the recklessness whispered in my ear and they said, hey, you're just an intern. <laughs> you don't have a lot to lose if you make an infographic and spend a week on it that no one asked for us to make and that no one's paying for the company to produce played around in Photoshop a few times. What's the worst that could happen? So I did. Spent a week developing an infographic. And at the end of that week, I sure did get a talking to. And I sure did slip that infographic to the account rep. And they sure did give it to the client. And the client sure did love it and order three more on the spot. Inside of a year, I had become the creative director at a marketing agency that didn't even have a creative department when I came on board. There, I learned skills I never would have learned, actually how to be a designer. I met people I never would have met. I created a body of work I never would have created. And those are the things that continue to propel me into the life that you see me living before you today. All because I took a small risk at a company that I got because of a knot that I tied in a tie that I put on just because. Because I stood in the closet one day and said, what's the worst that could happen? See, this feedback loop is about more than just confidence and respect. It's about you and your life. And this feedback loop and the snowball effect, those are just my feeble attempts to put a concrete illustration on the wonderful, magnificent thing that is this journey of life, should you choose to get up and walk it. This is why people say it's not the destination that matters, it's the journey. Because the truth is, there is no destination. You're not done until you're dead. That's the finish line. Steve Jobs understood this. He could have cashed out at any time and quit and lived well, but he didn't. Why? There was always one more thing until the day he died. Why? Because he understood it in the real game of life, there is no finish line. All we have is the journey. There's no such thing as making it. There's no such thing as winding up where you want to be. You were keeping on moving. We are moving forward until we're not. So if all you have is the journey, make it the most badass journey you possibly can. <laughs> That's the secret sauce. So I'm going to bring it home for you. 
if you're taking notes, you're going to want to write this down. Here's what not to do. Don't do the same thing today that you did yesterday. And don't do the same thing tomorrow that you're doing today. Drive a different way to work. Hug a stranger. Memorize a phone number for crying out loud. Wear glasses that don't actually have lenses. I don't care. Just make a change and make it often. It doesn't have to be big. Because every single time you do, you're putting a single drop into the ocean that is your life. And one drop does not make a difference. What it does make is a ripple. And ripples make waves. And waves make surfers. So make your ripple, ride the wave. And when the people in your life who are surrounding you and going on this journey with you stop and ask, hey, Skitch, how did we get here? You might be surprised when your answer is something as simple as, well, one day, I decided to put on a tie. Thank you. Thank you.